Nintendo unveiling this surprise Nintendo Direct that celebrates 35 years of Nintendo, which is crazy. 35 years of Nintendo. I, yeah. I, I feel like I was just That's a kid crazy. exposed to like my first Nintendo game and console like just yesterday. But apparently I'm old. Uh, <laughs> still, you still haven't told us how old you are. Don't worry, chat. I'm older now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but pretty much in this direct, it obviously started off by celebrating some of the cool things that Nintendo has put out, um, some of yep. their biggest IPs. Um, but one of the things that really stood out throughout this whole direct is the fact that they're releasing. Um, well, they talked about that they're releasing some new toys to align um, mm. with Nintendo's 35th anniversary, new shoes with Pooh. I'm pretty sure a lot of people on chat already have seen uh, those sneak peek of those sneakers. They they look really dope. Mm, I, sneak peek, nice. Oh, sneak peek. <laughs> 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 I did that one and I didn't even realize I did. Uh, You're on they fire also today. talked about um, they they have this Mario Kart Live Home Circuit where it's like an AR. Oh my god, yeah. It's like a toy. You have a Mario Kart, but then you have like you set up these goal lines throughout your house mm. and it's an AR game and you could race against your friends. Like Super as dope. a kid, I would it have works. been crying on the floor for this as soon as I saw this direct. It's like the coolest thing ever. And like that really stood out to me because I just have to give Nintendo props because throughout their 35 years, they've done really random things that you wouldn't think a, a company like Nintendo would even bother pouring money into. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whether it's successful or they think it'll be successful or not, they've done it. What happened to Labo? Who knows? But they did it. <laughs> <laughs> what was Labo? Well, who it's knows? me. <laughs> who knows? But they did it. Um, so, so, like, I I love the fact that Mario Kart Live is kind of a homage to all their weird things that they've done and maybe it'll take off and be better than labo because what happened yeah. they also decided to release a game and watch do you guys know what game and watch is no the guy from Super Smash are you yeah. serious okay yeah oh, so oh the, the little character the characters from uh smash sure not, okay so. i'm old um well i'm not that old <laughs> i wasn't out when the game and watch i wasn't out of my mom's womb i wasn't even a thought in the womb um, but wait, oh my I'm god, sorry. I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, chat. Um, but Game and Watch, um, was pretty much like a handheld, it was Nintendo's first console handheld, it was their first thing. Um, and it had like little games on it, like little miniature games. And watch. And yeah, game and watch. And I there was a watch. It was it oh, it was right. Was <laughs> they decided to re release the game and watch handheld, oh, but wow. they put a color screen on it and they're putting like classic Super Mario games on there, which Ooh. is like really weird that they'll do this. It's definitely like not for every gamer, it's a collectible item. Um, I probably won't pick it up because it'll probably be hella expensive. But I'll probably want one. Uh, they 50 also bucks isn't bad. Yeah, but 50 bucks is also the price of like a Joy-Con. So, you're also probably thinking 50 bucks to US, which I mean, translates oh. to translates approximately to 342 million Canadian. But the biggest news from all of this is that they're putting um, some of mario's 3d classics together in a super they're calling it the super mario 3d all-stars yeah game, right so um for this you're actually going to be getting mario sunshine you're getting mario 64 and super mario galaxy so this is kind of the homage to all the 3d stuff nintendo's done and nintendo really paved the way for 3d gaming um, with the n64 are you guys excited for like the, the bundling of these three games? Because I know that's what a lot of people in the community are excited about. Or would you guys prefer to bundle other Mario games in a th 3D games in this bundle? These are the ones. Uh, yeah. These are the ones? These are the ones. If you're yeah. bundling any 3D games, it's Super Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy. Yeah. But apparently not Super Mario Galaxy 2. 
<laughs> as yeah. arguably the three best Super Mario games. I mean, don't get yeah. me wrong. I, I yeah. love Mario, but each one is the same thing. And these three are the true, like, they went and tried something different. And Exactly. Worked. Yep. So I never played Mario Sunshine. Um, so we're going to find a new co-host for Squadcast. Oh. The, uh, <laughs> you could send in your oh. audition. <laughs> um, no, but I never, I never played. I missed out on the GameCube. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So like, this is a really great opportunity for me to mm. play this game. However, um, it is going to be $79 here because I'm in Canada. Um, and they're not remastered versions. The, the It's higher resolution, so they made the screen bigger. Um, and, and that's kind of what you're getting there for those games. Do you guys think it's worth it at that price point, Ben, to actually have these three games bundled? Or would you have preferred to have a remastered version of these three games out? I'll tell you what. Nintendo is great at two things. <laughs> two things. Number one, they're great at taking risks. They have done that through the entirety of every console generation, whether it's the Wii, whether it's the Switch, the GameCube, whatever. Number two, they're great at overcharging for yep. Yep. everything. <laughs> yeah. They're like, I remember when I went and I had my Switch, I went to go get a Joy-Con smaller than a cell phone. And it was $100 at Walmart. $100. Oh That's Canadian. Okay. I think in US though, it's like 90 or yeah. something like that. Well, I don't know yeah. what it is for you guys. There, it's a controller that's smaller than a cell phone. And it's and it's that <laughs> ridiculously high price. That is the one thing that Nintendo is great at doing. Aren't they yeah. also doing like a thing where you can only get it until a certain amount of time? Yes, or I think it is a limited their, thing. Course. Yeah. 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 So that's the um so it's only available till March 31st of next year. Yeah. So, you know, these things, I wonder how much of them we'll see oh, going online after the 31st and how much they'll be sold at. So it may be, if you wait, it may be more than $79 Canadian. Yeah. Um, yeah. So because you know, that's probably be why they did that, huh? Like, and that's the thing. Nintendo has been doing these limited releases because they have that, they're that legacy brand. Like there's so much nostalgia packed into when you think of Nintendo that people will shell out money um, just to relive those memories, right? So we saw that with all their mini consoles. And do you think that this is the route to go when they're paying, especially like celebrating a 35-year milestone? Do you think it's okay to then limit um, the availability of these consoles when you know they've had resale issues with people selling these for like really high? And Nintendo is fully aware of that because they even had to change the release of, I think it was the SNES Classic, so then it releases in blocks so people weren't holding them back and selling them for more. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think they, I think they thrive on it, to be honest. They, yeah. that's part of what builds the brand and makes items, collector items is the, you know, the limited amount of them and whether it's yep. games or cardboard <laughs> people are gonna pay a lot for it you know if it has nintendo on it or mario they're gonna pay stupid amounts of money if they oh, can't man. just go and pick it up from the store themselves cardboard. Yeah. that was good <laughs> think nintendo is like a, a wholesome company or do you think they are just like any other soulless money <laughs> yeah. you know money they put on a nice company. face i feel like they're Amen. like in the middle I, I think so, yeah. too. I mean, they like I said, they take risks. Like, clearly, they're they're not all about money, money, money. They, that's a huge part of it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but they very much want to try new things and do new things. You look at their entire lineup of consoles, and not one is similar to the other. Whereas you look at Xbox and PlayStation, it's like, yep, that's a transition from the last one. That's a transition from the one previously. You know, with Nintendo, it's like you go from the GameCube to the Wii to the Switch. And it's yeah. like they, they look like they were made by the three different that. companies. Wait, we got to talk about the Wii U. That was, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it exists. Um, More like the yeah, Wii U because it stinks. Nice. <laughs> nice. Well, we're all with the puns today. I love it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so they're, they're very, <laughs> they're very much like they, they want the money. No doubt about it. But they're clearly about taking risks. And I agree with you, Alex. Yeah. They're kind of in the middle. But they're still yeah. they're still mega corporation. They want yeah. they want your dollars, you know. Just like Malik said, 
the idea of this Mario thing being a limited time thing, it creates the need to buy it. You know, right. it makes you feel like I got to get this at launch or I'm not going to get it. It, it. That FOMO, right? The the fear of missing out there is is big time. And so they know. They know exactly what they're doing when they do that stuff. So yeah. I don't know. I think I think it's super lame. To I, to play but, devil's advocate, they could also take the position that it would take longer to completely remaster them and they could also mess them up big time and it would just make the fans even unhappier so they yeah. would oh, be no. they might be a safer bet to take the you know betting on nostalgia For instead sure. of trying to completely remaster it i i don't mind that they aren't remasters i i'm okay with the fact that they're just like hey here's these old games that you can now play on your brand new nintendo switch i'm like like hell yes um hundred percent. If I was still traveling and stuff, I would buy this instantly. But my problem is that these are three really old games, some more than a decade old, yeah. and I'm paying a full price game for it. Yeah. And it's yeah. only going to be available for like six months. Yeah. Yeah. What? Um, <laughs> I feel like Nintendo, I, you know, they, like you guys mentioned, they do do that innovation, but they also know from their licensing and everything like that, they're going to make money either ways. And I think that's why they give themselves this freedom to innovate with their tech that they go out there, their toys, whatever it is that they're doing. Now going yeah. into the mobile space, um, well, a few years ago going into the mobile space and you know trying to hit it out of the park there. Um, but I, I do wish just sometimes that um, I, I could just get this for free. Can, can I just get this for free? Can, <laughs> Like, I already pay the Nintendo Online membership. Can we just get it for free? <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Because it's been a while um, that people have been speculating that Nintendo Online would allow for 64 games uh, and 64 games to go on uh, that service, right? Um, and now that I know that this is coming out as a game, I don't think that's going to happen. We're not going to see N64 games on Nintendo Online ever, um, just because then they would have done that already. Yeah. Or maybe we will, because Nintendo does also have the habit of, you know, putting out these games on another device, like they did with the Super um, Super Nintendo Classic, right? And then releasing it on the Nintendo Online Store, so then you have it in two places. Um, when when you could have just had it in one if you just bought the bought one of them or knew right. that they weren't going to release it again, right? And having a yeah. much more convenient package. So it'll be interesting. I, I'm I'm just hoping that Nintendo will never go away, which I, I, I know Nintendo will definitely never go away um, never. because it's brought never. so much great memories to me as being a child. Like when I sit down and play any Mario game around Christmas time, it just takes me back to nostalgia because, you know, you're when you're a kid, you're off from school, you can play video games as much as you want. And mo most of those games for me as a kid was uh, Mario games. So I'm wondering for you guys, what is your most iconic or most nostalgic Mario memory to celebrate the 35 year anniversary of Mario? Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I put you guys on the spot. I did it. I did it. I'm wow. trying to, th I, there, there are honestly, there are a lot, but I remember, although I didn't have some of the newer Nintendo consoles, I do remember we had the N64 when I was very young. I would play Mario and I was super bad at it. So I'd always get my brother like, like I would want to play, but I would never beat a level. So I would just end up getting, like my brother would just take the controller and beat the level for me. And I feel like I accomplished something. Uh, that's probably like my Power greatest memory. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I, I definitely wasn't. Well, we were talking about this earlier, but I wasn't the person that had the Nintendo consoles. Yeah. I was more like mm -hmm. the Sony. Sony person. I did have Game Game Boys though, but um, honestly, as a kid, I was just like, "Why do people like Mario?" Damn. Yeah. You're in the memory with just questioning people when they yeah. mention Mario. <laughs> yeah, because it's just like he's just a little plumber man. Like, why is that cool? Um, yeah. you know? mustache. He's in the trades. It is very cool. Honestly, it's it's the same thing with like Mickey Mouse. Mouse. I don't know why Mickey <gasps> Mouse is so iconic. Whoa. Yeah, Mickey Whoa. Mouse is. Whoa. Whoa! We got some hot takes. Yeah, hot takes this season, episode. Wait, I mean, it's just a, it's just a mouse with ear. They did three circles. Yep. It's like that's a lazy Olympics the, logo. That's the best. 
best thing though, because it's so simplistic that you're able to make something so simple in design, just this iconic character based on creating good content around it. Same thing with Mario. Boom. But I also liked Luigi more than Mario anyways. So okay. Luigi's Mansion uh, was my I did favorite. like Bowser. Whoa. Yeah, I like Bowser. Bowser's cool. Yeah. I, I, but- <laughs> do, you, do you have an older sibling? Because I had to like Luigi because I was player two all the time. <laughs> no, so I <laughs> I used to, I had a Game Boy and I played Super Mario all the time. And I didn't have a computer in my house. And so I would just play Mario and just see how fast I could get through these levels and record myself. And then one day at school, I looked up, you know, people's speed records. And I realized that I was nowhere near that and I gave up on Mario. That was that was it for me. I just went to Pokemon after that. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, speed running's not my thing. Let's go to Pokemon. Yeah, Aww. I play Pokemon so much. Okay, this is not okay, Bulbasaur. Stay in the corner. We're not talking about Pokemon. We're talking about Mario. But you know what? We're not going to talk about anything oh, right now man. because we're going to take a quick break to get all the Pokemon out of our system. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> 